So the first thing I noticed on your website, and I'm sure you've thought about this before, is just that you have a lot of different things going on. So even if it was just about books, um, and it was stories, poems, and books up here, that's still a little bit too vague because we don't know the genre. So are these kids' books, like, are they for children or young adult or adults? Are they fantasy or sci-fi? Um, what kind of books are they? Because you can't just appeal to all readers. You need to decide what kind of readers um, you're trying to appeal to. But then also up here you have paintings, events, um, different things. And I, I actually had that problem before too because I was a painter um, before I was a writer. But what you kind of need to do is break it down into different um, platforms. You need to decide what do you want this website to do and what do the majority of your website traffic, like what do they... What do they find? So if you can um, see your most popular posts or what people are responding to, um, you can focus on increasing traffic for those posts and talking more about things that interest those readers. But also you need to choose you know, what things are really making you money on your site. You want to focus a little bit more on that. So if it's your books that you really want to focus, um, you need to make it clearer and try to attract that audience specifically. So I'm going to take a look at your books also, and then I'll go over to Amazon. Um, you have links that go to Amazon. Your covers go to Amazon. That's fine. I think these covers could be stronger. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that later when I get to the Amazon page. So you basically have, so far, a story, um, a book about animals. And I haven't read it yet. It's perfect for two to six-year-olds, so it's a children's book for early readers. Um, which is fine. And then you also have the poetry, and I'm not sure if the poetry is mostly for adults. It seems like it is, if it's emergency room blues. Um, it's kind of interesting, and this seems like kind of part of your backstory. If you were a doctor or a nurse or you worked in a hospital, um, that can be an interesting thing to put in your biography, but only if it helps you to sell the books or appeals to your target audience. I think it's also kind of nice that you have this long excerpt down here. You have the short story so people can kind of get a taste of your writing right away. Um, what you're missing is a call to action, which just means after they finish some content, you need something like a content upgrade or a call to action that says, did you like this free short story? You know, get five more short stories for free when you sign up to my email list. So something like an offer here where you can try to get people on your list. And on your about page, you have this um, list of accomplishments and links and stuff, which is fine and good. Um, but what you really need on the top is story, because this is something that people will skim and they won't really feel anything. You need to be building a relationship with your readers by telling your author's story or your journey. So um, instead of just, I was born, I spent my life in Australia, this is kind of just a summary. You need to have a couple paragraphs that's like, this is my value, this is my meaning, this is why I create and who I create for. Um, talk more about your, like, what are you providing? What are the benefits or the specific value that you're providing to a certain audience? Who is that audience? What kind of things do they like? What are you trying to help them with or provide them with? Um, and tell that in a story. So I, you know, I spent my life in hospitals and I realized that um, telling stories could really help with healing or mood or uh, doctor-patient relationships or, you know, getting rid of fears. Um, find a way to make your writing and your paintings if you want to try to link them together. Like I said, it's difficult to link them together on the same page, but if you are doing that, um, think of a way to really link them with your story. So maybe I started um, painting or illustrating because I used art um, as a way to distract patients from their pain or the healing process or um, the restorative or the healing powers of, of art. So that's why I studied like art therapy or I got into painting. Um, and that's also why I write because you can distract um, patients with really good stories and help them to forget their fears, their suffering or their pain or whatever. If you can include some of that stuff to make your work more valuable and also tell the story of why you do your work and why your work is important, um, that's the kind of stuff that can really make a difference in building a relationship with your readers and also getting them to care about the work that you're doing. Also here on your paintings page, um, you have a pretty good uh, 
a gallery feature that shows off all the paintings, um, but you're missing some content. So one thing is like Google can't, they don't know what to do with this page because it's all pictures and there's no keywords. So you really need a few paragraphs of content introducing, you know, why do you paint? What kind of things do you paint? Who do you paint for? What kind of themes um, do you like to use? You could even have something like a my painting process, a video of like you actually painting and how you paint or some how-to videos um, on how to paint landscape kind of thing. Those can be an interesting way to get people to feel more comfortable and to, to know your work. So it's not just about the paintings, um, but also some keywords. So I paint, you know, um, fantasy landscapes or bright colors or um, just some things to let readers connect a little more. So it's not just visible. Um, you can't just show the painting. You have to explain why the painting matters. But also you should have something like, you know, are these for sale? Can you buy these paintings? Um, can you order a print? You need to have some other call to actions. Like if they like a painting, um, and probably you need something like the title of the painting and a short um, paragraph about the painting. Like I painted this painting when I was here thinking about these things and this is what it means to me. Um, what do you think about the painting? Leave a comment. Try to focus a little more on engagement and interaction with the readers because um, it's kind of just a dead end here. Like they just look and they're like, yeah, that's really cool. But they, there's no call to action. They can't interact with you. They can't leave a comment. They can't really do anything except look. Um, and so you want to kind of build a relationship by asking for feedback and comments. And then you also want to offer the sale, which means, you know, buy a, a print. This is kind of um, some people use Etsy.com for prints or um, there's another website, which is Society8. But even if you use something like Cafe Press or Zazzle, which are other print-on-demand companies, you could offer um, postcards or prints or posters or things. Uh, Etsy is usually a safe bet. You can usually like sell it on Etsy for more money, maybe $25 per print, um, and then order it cheaper somewhere else or send it to them directly. Um, but that's also just a nice... You could also do something like um, sign up to my email list and I'll send you a free postcard of your choosing. That's kind of an easy thing to do. There's um, websites and services where you can send a postcard for like a couple dollars. Um, that's a lot of money to pay for just some random subscriber. But if, for example, you could have something like um, sign up to my email list and um, share or pin this picture on Pinterest or share it on social media um, and I'll send you a postcard. If you can get people to sign up to your list and they're interested in your art and you send them a nice postcard, um, maybe one out of 10 people will actually buy a painting. Um, so you could earn your money back that way. Or you could say something like sign up to my list and you will be entered to win a painting. So you, you're not committing to sending everybody a postcard, but you know maybe once a year um, you choose one of your subscribers or you do some contest or giveaway and you give away one of your paintings. That can build engagement with your audience as well. Um, so I think even if you're using this one main website to sell both paintings and books, you can focus a little more on tying it all together by really being clear about the, the relationship between your paintings and books and how they interact together. You could also do something like um, partnering with your poems and your painting. So like you could write a short poem for each of your paintings and then you could have a coffee table book which is a book of poems that also includes the painting. So it could be like 25 or 50 paintings um, and short poems. There could be short poems um, that match every painting and then on every page, like this would be one painting page, um, it would be like a, and this is also something that's easy to share on social media, but like every day you could share um, one painting and one short poem that you wrote on Twitter and Facebook or Pinterest and met, that can be like one piece of content. And then on each of those one pieces of content, you would have click here to buy the book, click here to buy the coffee table book and get, or sign up to my email list and get the PDF of all the paintings and all the poems, um, things like that that you can do, which will really help with not only the traffic, because if you are sending out great content like that with your short poem and painting on Pinterest, Twitter, and Facebook, um, your website, you'll get a lot of traffic and visibility back to your site. 
but then you also need to ask for the sale um, and have something available so that there's a reason for them to sign up to email list and or go directly and buy the book um, or buy a printing or buy a, a painting right away. So the other one thing I noticed on your website is that you don't really have a blogs page. So you have upcoming events, um, which you probably just keep updated with whatever is a future event. You may want to add something here that says past events and link to other um, things that you've done online. Other past events can be a sign of credibility. You can show kind of what you've been involved in, um, other signings or art shows or whatever. Um, and you can also link back to those other events, which is good for, you know, promoting the other events that included you. It's kind of a nice thank you. Also just shows your, your credibility your, and your history a little bit. Um, however, you also kind of want to have a blog page because right now you have a lot of content, but you don't really have any keywords. So you're not going to get any traffic because if people don't already know your name, if they're not searching for Cassandra Arnold stories, poems, books, or paintings, um, they're not going to find you. What people will be searching for might be like landscape paintings or interior design um, or short stories, poems, or books. Again, this is like not quite specific enough, so you need to focus on poems about X or poems for people who like, you know, some subject. Try to get as specific as possible. Um, even if you break down all of your poems, instead of having like a whole collection of poems, um, I would publish each poem as an individual blog post with a painting. That's probably an easy way. It's content you probably already have available. You probably already have a lot of, um, and there might be a disconnect between here, your book of poetry is um, emergency blues, and that may not connect directly to the paintings, which are mostly landscapes, um, but you might find a way to try to connect them. So I would have a blogs page um, where, you know, every day I, or every week I publish a painting with or even like a small sketch like you could publish one short poem with one quick and easy sketch um, which can be something you just draw you know a, a pencil sketch or something that can be not really a finished work but just kind of something to to go with the poem um, and you want more content so if you get a lot of short poems like if you write a short poem every day like you know five lines or something um, with a short um, easy sketch and you put that up as a poem about something so like a poem for when you're feeling sad a poem um, to give you more motivation a poem to help you achieve your goals a poem for gratitude um, if you can every day focus on one specific subject so that when people are searching for things like that they there's more of an opportunity to find your work and then on that page you have a nice little poem with a nice um, graphic or sketch and then a link to sign up for the book or buy the full book or get my see my paintings or something like that um then there's more opportunity for people to to find your your page or access your website um, and then once they found your page if it's a nice poem and a visual graphic um together even if it's like a the graphic and then you actually put the text of the poem on the graphic um you can use tools like canva and I have a graphic design tool actually that, that might help with, with that. Um, I also use Word Swag a lot. It's an iPhone or iPad app for graphic design. It just makes it really fast and easy to make these kinds of graphics even if you don't have design skills. So you can add you know, a couple sentences, a, a really short poem um, and put that even. I would, if it's a longer poem, like um, three or four paragraphs or stanzas, I think they're called. I'm not really a poet. Um, you could pull just a couple lines from the longer poem and put it on the, the image itself. Um, but that's the kind of thing that makes really good content because it's really shareable. So then you can you know, have, make sure you have um, share icons on your blog. I'm not sure if you're using WordPress um, or what. Okay, I checked and you're using um, Weebly, which is fine. They probably have a way to put some kind of share buttons or icons. Um, if not, I think there are probably some third party um, share buttons that you could find and use. I'll bet Weebly, I'm sure they have them, so if you Google um, like Weebly search button, uh, share buttons, you can probably add at least on the bottom of your blog posts. I'm sure Weebly has an ability to do blog posts, 
um, at the bottom of your posts, there should be something like share button. So if you're posting really good shareable content, like short motivational, inspirational, um, meaningful poetry with a quick sketch, since you're an artist and a writer, um, then you should have buttons at the bottom to share um, or pin the images. Because I actually have a, um, a Pinterest plugin, I can share pictures on your site pretty easily. Um, I get that little pop-up that says I can save it to my Pinterest. However, I, okay, it does seem to also work for your gallery. I wasn't sure if it was gonna work on your gallery plugin, but it seems like it does. Maybe not, I can't actually get to that um, Pinterest plugin that I usually use. So that's something to consider. Like you wanna make it really easy for them to share. Um, like I said, I think adding a blog post and you know, twice a week or every day, if you wanna challenge yourself and do like, I'm going to write a poem and draw a short sketch for a hundred days, um, that's something that you know you could probably do in about an hour a day. Um, it's a commitment, but if you do it consistently for 100 days you'll, and share it, um, you'll probably see a big uptick in traffic to your blog, um, which you know will help with book sales and painting sales and everything else. So you really want to like, you need to increase traffic to your blog and visibility, um, and then you need to try to get more people to sign up for your to your email list with an opt-in offer. Um, which could be something like if you do it for 100 days and you have 100 um, posts, then you can put them all together into a PDF or a free download. And you can also put it into um, a better, like a format, a well-formatted coffee table book or a new book on, on Amazon. Um, that's the kind of way you can build content that improves your, your traffic to your website and then have an opt-in offer to build your email list. And then you can use the email list to get reviews when you launch the book. Um, and then hopefully that's a new product that will be selling. Um, and once you get people to buy that book, hopefully you know you can get them to come back if they really like the books and they want to buy a print or a custom painting or something like that. That might help with the paintings um, as well. Also, one other thing I noticed, it's a small thing, but um, it looks like I can see your book. Um, this one goes straight to Amazon.com, but this one links to amazon.ca, which is um, Canada. And then these links, it's fine if you wanna offer these, but um, it doesn't look like these are active links anyway, so you can't really click them. So I'd make them active links or just say like, buy a print copy here and I could just click it um, to get it. This one also goes to amazon.ca. So I'm not sure maybe you are you were in Canada when you set this up. Um, you may want to use something like a universal book link, which will um, choose the right Amazon store for, for depending on where people come from. Otherwise, I would just send them to amazon.com, which is the main site, and it should redirect people to, depending on where they are. So this is your Amazon page for Emergency Blues. Um, I think, you, I guess you intentionally didn't capitalize um, E and B of the title in your cover. It looks okay on the cover, but um, it's a little weird not to have it capitalized on the title. Um, for me, that just stands out as a little bit unusual. Um, it like it's a, it's a conscious choice you did deliberately. That's probably fine, but you'll never have the opportunity to explain that to readers. So if they see it, they may just think, um, you know, it's a typo or it's just not very professional. So that's always a risk when you do things um, differently. The main thing is you need more reviews. So that'll help when you um, build an email list, but also you really need to be active about sending out copies to potential reviewers. So this is something that looks like it could be really great for um, nurses or night shift workers or doctors. Um, that's something that may really interest people who spend time in a hospital and really deal with sickness or death or things like that. So what you would want to do is set this book up on BookFunnel or InstaFreebie or even just have it on your website. Um, get the PDF formatted um, so that you can send it to people easily. Um, because the problem is if you don't have any reviews, you're not going to sell the book. And if you don't sell the book, you're not going to get more reviews. So it's kind of tricky to get started. But you need at least like 10 reviews before you can even do um, any book marketing. So that's like the first thing to do is just fix um, that 
Also, you have ballads up here, which is an interesting choice um, because less people are probably searching for ballads than poetry. You can use keyword search tools. Um, I recommend KDP Rocket, but off the top of my head, I would just guess there's more people searching for poetry or short poems than there are searching for um, ballads. So you want to choose keywords that people are actually searching for. It's not necessarily something you want to change. Um, you have this keyword down here, but for keywords, like um, you want keywords in your title and you also want it high up in your description. So if it's in the, like the closer it is to the far left, like the first couple words in your title or the first couple words um, in your description, uh, the more impact it's going to have on search results. So if people don't find your book, it doesn't matter what you say in the description. But then once they found the book, you want to have a really good description that, that hooks them. So you kind of want to make it clear who would want this. Um, and it also looks kind of weird down here. After I click the read more, it sounds like she now lives in Canada with her and it cuts off here. There's, it looks like there's more content, but it's not showing up. Um, I'm not really sure why, because I don't think there's a limit to the description. Um, so you might want to check what's going on there and why the rest of it isn't showing up. But then you really need to focus on, I think it's a good idea to have a poem up here in your description um, to hook readers, but you also need to focus on keywords, describing the book really clearly. What is this book? Who will like it the most? Who will enjoy it? Who will appreciate it? Um, this, I think, could be a really good gift book. So for people who have friends or family who work in hospitals, or if you're married to a nurse or married to a doctor, this could be really like a great Christmas present or birthday gift um, for people in the industry. And that's a really huge industry. So there's a lot of potential and opportunity there um, to sell the book. But like I said, you need to get more reviews. You can also do Facebook advertising um, really well with a book like this, where you can target either people who work in the industry or people who are friends or family of, of um, healthcare workers. Um, and if you put the offer in front of them, you know, grab this free book of poetry for healthcare workers to build an email list um, to give them a free copy so that you can start getting some reviews. Once you have some reviews, you could focus more on the sales and really target um, this as a gift book for people. And this also might be something where you could take these, um, these poems, it's 17 short poems, you could take each of these short poems and you could turn it into a really beautiful um, infographic with a tool like Canva or a tool like Wordswag. Um, you could turn those into, or you could pay someone on like Fiverr.com, um, probably for like 10 or 20 bucks, they could take each poem and turn it into a really beautiful infographic. Um, and that's the kind of thing that will get great shares. So if you post those kind of things on Pinterest or on your website or on Facebook, um, if you post them in you know, Facebook groups for healthcare providers or healthcare service industries or, or nurses or doctors, there are specific Facebook groups for those types of people. Um, so if you post a really beautiful info, like a, it's a one graphic um, post and you wanna have like basically the poem, um, you don't necessarily need any art or or um, a sketch for these it can just be a well like a word art basically but a, a well-designed word art down at the bottom you'd have um, your website or your just your author name um, Cassandra Arnold really small and small text on your graphic because if they get lots and lots of shares but that's the kind of thing vis um, images get shared really well so if you turn your poems into um, graphics that can be shared and the really beautiful graphics that really resonate with people um, and you put those up on Facebook or do a little promotion, Pinterest, Facebook, and Twitter basically, those can get lots and lots of shares because it's the kind of thing that, that shares really well. Um, so what you ideally want to do actually is turn them into graphics and share them on your website first, like I mentioned with the blog post. So if you have you know each of those 17 poems, you get it turned into um, a really good looking infographic or word art, word poster. Um, you put that on your blog post with here's the, the, the word art for sharing. Um, here's a short sketch I made. Here's what I was feeling or like here's a story of my experience 
that inspired this post when I was working in, you know, wherever you're working in. Um, here's this patient that inspired this post. Like you can give some more context and background for each poem, but then having the word art um, to make it shareable. And then people will share the post because you can, if you tell an inspiring story about your patient or your experience um, and the poem and the word art, that makes it much more shareable and, and much more likely to resonate with people. But then people can share, and when they share the post um, to your website, the featured image will show up and that will be your word um, art probably that includes some of your, your poem. And like I said, if this is a longer poem, um, like I would probably do a short version, which is just a few phrases, and then a long version, which is the full poem. Um, on Pinterest, longer graphics work really well, so um, a, a longer, narrower graphic. Even if like you want to, you want to go really simple. Something I've done in the past is just um, format the the book quickly. Like if I've already formatted formatted the book, um, and let me take a quick look. Actually, sorry, I'm, I'm kind of talking a lot without doing anything else, but I can look inside this book. Um, and so you, these are pretty simple. They look fine. Um, one thing you can do with poetry is get better looking graphics for the interior formatting. I probably wouldn't do it for the ebook because it can be risky to try to do too, too many clever things. But one easy way you can make the ebook better is to get these designed um, as graphics and then add the graphic into the book. So after every poem, you could add one big graphic or maybe not the whole thing, but you could um you could like have when i am the do doctor i always dreamt of being that's a really good hook so i could put just this um sentence in one big infographic or one big graphic um and put it like below every every poem but the other thing i i could do um which i was going to say is like a really easy low budget way is just just take a screenshot of the poem um so you just basically take a screenshot of your of this poem and then that's a graphic and that makes it easier to share when you have the graphic. You don't want only graphics on your website because graphics don't have any um, keywords so they're harder for Google to to figure out what your website is about but you can have a nicely designed um, word art for the poem and also put the text of the poem and also put the backstory like what inspired you to write this poem, what were you thinking when you wrote this poem, um, try to share a short anecdote or patient story or anything you know that will resonate with readers um, that's an easy way to kind of make the poem matter because they like the poem might be nice but the story is what they'll remember so if you tell the story a really interesting meaningful story um, that's what can actually resonate with people and make your poetry more meaningful for people and the more meaningful your poetry is the more you can kind of give them a, a hook or a way to get into it um, the, the more likely they're going to share your content and care about the story. Like if it really resonates with them, um, it's easy to share. Like I said, with those shares bu share buttons or the pictures, um, that can all really help get more visibility. One other thing I'll mention here under the, um, the author website, uh, sorry, the author profile. So down here, this is another place you need to be careful about putting keywords. So you talk a lot about yourself and what you do, but you don't really give people um, a reason to care specifically. So transform and inspire lives with books and stories, but you need to still say really clearly what kind of books you write or what kind of books you want to write. If you haven't really figured that out yet, that's fine. Um, what kind of readers you want to write for, what kind of books you enjoy reading even. Um, can be a useful thing for keywords. So, uh, you know, I love re reading self-help, spiritual, inspirational, motivational books, and also, you know, poetry. Um, I want to be known as a writer who writes um, really meaningful, in-depth poetry about this kind of life experience so that I can help um, inspire or motivate or whatever. Like, you want to focus a little more on your readers and the benefits um, and the keywords so that you can be a little more found. So not only in the description of the book, but also in your author bio that's important. So this is your other book on Amazon. This is kind of another interesting question, um, whether or not you should use pen names and how to separate your different types of books. 
Um, same thing with the reviews. You really need to focus on getting more book reviews before you can do anything um, with the book. This looks like more of a children's a read aloud adventure, um, which is not bad. I think the probably with the cover, um, it looks a little bit more like a National Geographic nonfiction book about animals. So um, if it's a story about a very scary zoo, you might want to get some illustration uh, instead that fits a little bit more and also that fits a little more like the horror thriller um, because right now it, it doesn't quite look like the right kind of genre for um, this book. But what I was going to say about um, the author names is I, I assume this is another one of your books but you have a different name on this book which is probably a good idea. You kind of do want to separate your books to audiences. I, um, I wasn't doing this very well previously but if you claim your book on Kindle um, on author on Kindle's author platform, Author Central is what I meant to say actually. So on Author Central, you can have one main account and you can add a few other pen names. Um, and it's a good idea to keep your different writings separate if it's a very different audience. So with the the poetry um, and the the children's books, that's a very different audience. Probably good use a good idea to use a pen name so that you have um, different audiences. But when I click on this link, it doesn't actually go to an author page, which means you haven't set this author name up yet as um, an actual author name. So if you sign up with Author Central, you can create an author platform for this um, pen name so that when they click the link, it actually goes to um, an Amazon page like it does with your other book. Same comments um, with the description. I can see actually that this is illustrated with full color photographs. So if it is full of photographs, um, then this cover is probably a good idea um, just because you, you do want the inside to match the outside. So even though I think an illustrated cover might sell better for the genre, um, you can just kind of try to make this um, fit the genre a little bit. I A little bit of tweaking um, might help. I could help uh, take a look at that if you want to try to update your cover design, but that's not the main problem right now. The main problem is really just getting um, 10 reviews. So this is the kind of same kind of thing with children's books. It's a very different topic, um, but I'll talk about it for a while because I think it's interesting. Most people say children's books are harder to sell because um, a lot of parents don't shop online and they don't want their, their young kids playing with iPads or eBooks. Um, so they focus more on print sales and it's more difficult to sell print books um, I actually think there's a lot of opportunity for children's books authors to sell lots and lots of copies because most of them aren't really doing any marketing. They're doing maybe live events or they think they should focus on the print sales. Um, but it's so much easier to market uh, an ebook because you can give away free copies. Um, so I think you can do better. Like if I had children's books and I, I really would like to have some of my own because um, I do think they can sell really well even for a short book. So the, the advantage of writing children's books, you know, this is 27 pages. So if you can write a children's book and get it illustrated or get the photos for it um, pretty quickly, you should be able to finish, you know, one a month or several a month. Um, and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to sound condescending to children's books authors as if it's like easier or faster um, than writing a novel. But in some ways, if that's what you like to do, um, it should just take less time to, and less like time investment. Um, it's still difficult to write a good one and get it illustrated well. Um, but you should be able to produce them faster. So getting more visibility for your children's book, I think you can use a lot of the same guerrilla marketing um, tactics to get it in front of readers. So the first thing I would do is do um, a free campaign. It looks like you're already in Kindle Unlimited for this book. So if you haven't done a free campaign, I would do that. Although um, I would really try to get to up to 10 reviews even before you do a free campaign. It's kind of a, a challenging thing. Um, but you can't even give your book away for free without reviews. So you have to kind of get started somewhere and have a couple reviews, even if they're just friends or family, um, or you have to be more active about reaching out to readers um, by offering them a free book. So you could do like Facebook ads or you could put your book up on Instafreebie or BookFunnel um, to try to connect or do a, a cross promotion with other children's books authors um, to get people to download for free. You could also think about making the ebook perma free for a while and trying to upsell them on the hardcover. Although it looks like right now this is only an ebook and it's not connected to the paperback. Um, so I would definitely try to get a print 
version mm -hmm. made on Create Space that's not very hard, even if it's just um, a soft cover book that's print on demand, um, just so there's the option of selling the print copy, because that means you can give away a lot of free ebook copies um, and also sell some print copies and make some of the money that way. But what I was saying is, um, readers will say, and like author, adults, uh, parents will say they don't like electronic books, but the truth is they're always looking for new reading material and they will probably download lots of free um, books, children's books, just to kind of take a look. Um, and if they find something they really like and their kids really like, then they might order the, the hard copy to have a copy at home. Um, so the main problem is just visibility. So you want to try to get as much visibility as you can and get those reviews up. Um, I would do a lot of, I would probably price it like 99 cents. This is, I guess I'm still in the Canada store. So I'm over in the US um, Amazon store now, but I see kind of the same problems where just not enough reviews. So one easy thing to do is if you do set up a copy on, on BookFunnel and into freebie, you can just go into some um, Facebook groups or blogs or websites. If you search for like best children's books um, or children's books groups or parents um, of young children groups or whatever, um, or even other authors of children's books, I'm sure there are some groups like that on Facebook, you can just say, hey, I'm, I'm really trying to get reviews on my book. Here's a free copy if anybody wants to download it. Just share a link like that. Um, you don't really want to be promotional in Facebook groups and say like buy my book, but if you're if you have a genuine message and just say I am an author who wrote this book and I would really like to get some reviews, um, it's usually okay to just post your link and, and ask, or you could ask for feedback and be like I wrote this children's book but it's not selling. Can anybody, you know, let me know? Anyway, it's it's kind of a good idea to to build relationships and start putting your book out there, um, but you do need to give out a lot of free copies. Um, to get the reviews before you start marketing. So it's kind of, um, it's something that you really have to be actionable about. It can be uncomfortable reaching out to other people for reviews or asking for feedback on your work. Um, but if you are publishing, um, you can't really expect strangers to buy or download your book unless it has enough reviews so they feel comfortable um, even taking a closer look. So it does take some work to build the reviews um, I have a lot of resources for um, list building and, and getting more reviews in my courses um, that you can check out, and we talk a lot about it in the in the private Facebook group as well. Same thing also about the keywords in the description. Um, you don't have keywords like kids book, children's book, um, perfect to two to six year olds, but just a little bit more um, specific keywords about the genre. Um, it's pretty easy, like a read aloud adventure makes it pretty clear what kind of book this is, but that is actually a little bit hard to read because it's black text on the back background. So just looking at, at the white text in the front cover, um, it could be a little hard to figure out. I mean, it, it kind of looks like a children's book, so you're doing a lot right, but it's a little difficult to see. If you haven't tried it yet, you might want to take a look at um, the Amazon author giveaways down here. We can set up a giveaway um, and just make it public. Generally, what I do with Amazon author giveaways is I set it up and make it private and I only share it with my list um, because I want to make sure that just the right readers of my genre are downloading it but if you don't already have a platform you can set up a giveaway and make it public um, and Amazon will show your book to a lot of people and hopefully just people who are interested in the book would download it and maybe review it. The other thing I'll mention with children's books you could probably do a lot of the same content marketing type of stuff so on the inside of the books if there's a photograph with text, you could probably turn those into um, nice looking pictures or infographics as well that can be easier to share. Um, I'm not sure if this font is super easy to read, um, which might be a problem uh, to consider. It's a, it's a nicely, I mean, it fits the genre, um, but it's different than the font you have on the book cover. But for example, like here, One Enormous Elephant, that would make a pretty good picture, even like a flashcard. Um, so one thing you could do is try to have a maybe an upsell offer like you give away the book for free but they can buy a package of, of companion flashcards or something um, or you can just have a package of free um, animal flashcards for kids and have that package up um, somewhere where people can can find it and download it so that they could um, use it Anyway, I hope this video helps you to, um, to get started and 
think of some things you need to focus on first and let me know if you need um, any feedback or advice when you're working on things. One other final thing I, I haven't said yet is that you really need more books. So there's things you can do to fix these books and get them selling more. Um, but since you already have like only one book per author name, um, the more new books and new content you can put out, the easier it's going to be to sell um, these books. So, like you need more reviews um, and you need some content marketing so you can get some more organic traffic to keep your books visible and selling. But also every time you put out a new book, it's going to really help with visibility um, and sales and, and everything else. So you can work on improving what you've got and fixing up your funnel um, a little bit, building up your email list, but you also really should be thinking about your next project. You know, what are you going to publish next? What do you want to be working on? And set yourself some, some deadlines so that you start getting those projects um, completed as well. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.